All right, guys. Uh, in this case, we are going to check how some questions are given considering the parallel operation of alternators, which is the synchronizing of alternators. Remember, when synchronizing the alternators, uh, there is uh, a, a, a to represent a, a alternators connected. Maybe there are two alternators, A and B, connected together in a parallel combination. That is uh, to synchronize. So there are conditions that you will need uh, in your syllabus uh, as you are working with these uh, combinations, the distributions of your alternators, uh, considering uh, the formulas, uh, the calculations that you might be given. So in a condition that, uh, let's say, you are given two uh, EMFs, all right? There are two uh, alternators that you are working with and you consider A and B, okay? So I'm just gonna try, just have something of this nature, considering A and B. You are going to see that the resultant that you will have uh, considering this to be uh, taken from the, the phase, which is taken from zero degrees. Let's say there is the generated uh, EMF, which is, uh, uh, you can just consider as the voltage that you'll be given there, the open circuit voltages. Another uh, separated by a certain angle to be, all right. Then the resultant taken in between these uh, two, uh, let's just say we've got ER being, the resultant EMF, this being our resultant EMF. So you're going to see that the voltage, this uh, open circuit voltage EB is fallen behind by the angle alpha. So it has fallen behind by angle alpha. So EB, we can just say, yes, fallen behind. Uh, behind by alpha degrees, which is electrical degrees. All right, so the E is for electrical degrees. I'm just gonna have a brief uh, part of what you need. And uh, you're gonna also see according to the the part that you have there is also a current to be considered which is our synchronizing current consider our synchronizing current as ic then uh this let's say we're gonna have a uh, flux one which is the the angle between taken between EA, which is at zero degrees. Remember, EA is at zero degrees. So there is alpha one. Then we're gonna also consider our angle. So it just depend with how you're going to present your angles. From this EA, uh, from this IEC, uh, which is our synchronizing current to ER, which is the resultant. Maybe you're just gonna call this theta, which is the angle between there. Uh, these are the most important things that you need, uh, but we're going to talk about uh, different situations, uh, scenarios that you will have in your exam. Uh, here I'm just giving you just like a summary of what you've already learned before so that we can be together. Then also some of the formulas that you will need uh, is to calculate that synchronizing current, which is the resultant EMF over Z, okay, which is uh, the impedance. So this Z is for both machines, for both 
machines. Remember, there are two machines there. Okay, considering A and B. There are two machines that we are going to consider. Okay, two machines. So you have to add the two. So in this case, you add the two. Add the two. Add the two. So meaning to say, you are going to add the two impedances uh, according to what you are given. Uh, you must add um, according to how you are given there. Remember addition, I talked about being best. Maybe you are given those uh, complex situations. Uh, it is best that you work with the rectangular form for an addition, division, polar form. I talked about that. So then E, so we consider ER. Remember, we said this is our resultant EMF from this part. That's our resultant EMF. So that is giving us the current. And remember, our current is measured in what? In amps. So this will give us the current. Number two, you will also need a condition. Maybe you are not given the resultant and you must calculate this resultant EMF. So it follows that the resultant EMF, because B is fallen by an angle alpha, it is taken to be a negative. So it is the difference you're going to take because it is it was supposed to be EA plus EB, but EB is, is fallen by a negative, by a certain angle. So it is taken as a negative value. So it's going to be EA minus EB. As just the phaser presentation. So in terms of the normal calculations, if you are using the angles that you'll be given, if you are using these angles that you'll be given, it follows that you can even calculate your ER as EA. Remember, EA is in phase. It is zero degrees. It is taken at zero degrees. So that is the angle of zero degrees in polar form. Plus, when you are dealing with the polar form of this, you do not consider the, 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 the minus. The minus is when you are given exact values, like you have got... Uh, exact values maybe they are already in uh, uh maybe let, let's just say we are given in a uh, rectangular form polar form it is its own way so you add on addition there it will create its negative on its own so you take eb at an angle because it is lagging it is taken behind by the angle alpha on a straight line where we know that angles on a straight line, they add up to 180 degrees. So it's going to be 180 degrees minus alpha, which is the remaining angle. Or you can just consider 180 minus alpha degrees. On a straight line, angles on a straight line. So alpha is this. So you take from this angle up to this part. It is going to be 180 degrees minus alpha. So on the calculation, the negative, whatever that it will be there in polar form, it will work on its, on its own. We're going to see that on our calculations. This is how we can present this. Considering our calculations, it is best that we do work as much as we can and uh, in some conditions, um, they'll even talk about uh, the phase. Okay, this uh, we can talk of uh, the phase. When you are to consider the phase, remember I talked about this part when we you have the, the line voltage. Maybe you are being asked to calculate 
the terminal voltage. Uh, it's a three phase. We let's talk of a three phase. Let's say this is a three phase star connected. How can I obtain this? The three phase, remember in our three phase, the line voltage is equal to square root of three VP for a star. So this time we're just gonna consider, you can just consider as EL as equal to the square root of three EP, which is for the phase. So when they ask you to calculate the terminal voltage, they want you to calculate the line voltage at the end. So it means we need EP for the phase. Right, remember these are measured in volts guys, okay? So we need EP for the phase. So EP, which is the phase, is the average of these two. It is simply the average. You can just take the average of these two. EA and EB over two, average. Okay? That is, you're considering for the phase. Then you consider the terminal. That is when you're dealing with a three-phase connection. So if it is a star, like we're working with a star connection, in most cases, you're just going to have to consider your formulas back to a star connection. This is what you have. You know your star connection formulas. It is also to be considered per phase EP as the difference, which is EA minus half ER, which is the resultant EMF. This being the half of ER, this half of ER being the impedance drop per machine. You're talking of the impedance drop per machine. Per machine. So this can uh, give us EP, which is for the first, then we consider EA, which is now the terminal for a, a three phase. For a single phase, your EP is your terminal voltage. For a single phase, your EP is your terminal voltage. But for a three phase, you have to consider this part. So it is the type of question that you're given there. So these are some of the things that you need uh, in answering of these typical questions and some additionals that we are going to have uh, and some of the additionals that you actually have learned in a class. 5.3, two similar three, check not, two simi, they are similar, same. Three phase star connected alternators. So that's a three phase star connected. All right, this is what you're given. They are connected in what? In a parallel connection. Each machine is a synchronous impedance of each, 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 each machine, one, one machine. That is why I was saying the impedance is to be taken as the total for both machines. So you add the two. So if they are just similar, identical to each other, they're the same. So Z must be two times what we are given here. 0, 0,2 plus J, 4,5. This is supposed to be our Z. The total for both, this is for both, for both 
machines. For both machines, this is how you find it. So meaning to say, we're gonna multiply two times 0 0,2, which will be 0 0,4 uh, plus two times uh, 4,5, that will be a nine. So you have obtained this, and remember this is a rectangular form. We can even convert this to a polar form. So the same Z in polar form, uh, remember the conversion guys, uh, I talked about uh, this conversion when we were even doing uh, a AC uh, calculations there. But uh, anyways, let us just have this sort of polar form shift to polar form, 0, 0,4. Then we're gonna separate this. Here that is a nine. Okay, so this will give us the R there, which is 9,00 uh, to three decimal place. That will be a nine there, nine comma, just, you can even just leave it as a nine, okay? Uh, or just 9,009. The angle, which is, remember in polar form, R angle of theta. So theta being the angle there is 87,455. To three decimal places. So thus we've got 87,455 degrees. So this is in polar form. So we are talking about uh, the Z, the total combined for the two. This is how you combine. So we have got uh, the polar form. So let's uh, leave it like that. So remember, it was perfect. Uh, then we consider this uh, uh, to be like each machine. So like for each machine, but for both, you multiply by two. Then you are given the machines are excited so that their EMFs are 1,910 and another, another one, 1,800. So there too, there, as we considered uh, from this part that B is lagging. So B is supposed to be smaller than A. B is supposed to be less than A. So in this calculation, it means we are going to take our A as 1,910. So that's our EA, 1,000. 910 volts then eb which is the second one 1804 which is the smaller one per perfez that's perfez and later retarded and later retarded that is to 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 retard like to to decrease to to take behind by an angle of 30 degrees, of 30 degrees, which is 30 electrical degrees. We are referring to the condition of the B, which is the one that I was talking about here. EB is to fall by alpha degrees, which is electrical degrees. This is the alpha that we are given according to this information. They gave us alpha electrical degrees in electrical degrees. So they gave us alpha, which is 30 electrical degrees. The one which affects B. So this one, it affects B. Like I said, uh, B is going to be taken uh, behind by an angle of alpha electrical degrees. So the question was, with this information that we are given here, calculate the following 5.31, the circulating current between the machines, the circulating current between the machines, which is our synchronizing current, resultant EMF over Z. All right, so that's our first part there, to calculate the circulating current. 
So the circulating current being the resultant EMF over the total impedance, that is the one that you consider for both machines. ER, we do not have. Check, we do not have. We have got EA, EB. EA, EB. We need ER. Since B is taken off, is falling by a certain angle, the best formula to use is the second one, this one. Remember, A, we are not given for the A, the angle for A because A is at zero degrees. But we are given that the second one, it is taken behind, it is lagging by 30 degrees. So this is the right formula that we use to calculate our EA. So from this formula, we saw that EA can be calculated, I mean, ER can be calculated uh, from this formula. ER is equal to EA at an angle of zero degrees plus EB at an angle of 180 degrees minus alpha because it is lagging by alpha degrees, electrical degrees. With this formula, you are not going to have any challenge. So this is a substitution. So the resultant EMF can be calculated. So that's EA, the bigger value, 1910 at an angle of zero degrees plus EB, 1,800 at an angle of 180 degrees minus alpha, which is 30 electrical degrees. So meaning to say this angle will be taken at what? At 150 degrees. Remember your polar form. You are now back to your polar form calculations. This is your polar form. But I said addition, as long as you're working with addition, it's very difficult for you to add in polar form. So you're forced to convert back to a rectangular form. So ER is going to be in polar form. Remember, guys, your calculator, you're going to have rectangular. Uh, then uh, you're going to have 111910 plus J0 there. Okay, if you simplify this, it was going to give us negative 1558,846. Plus J nine hundred. Okay, guys, remember, 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 remember this rectangular. So it's gonna be like this. Shift this time to rectangular form. So one thousand eight hundred. Let's just take this one as an example. One thousand eight hundred. Separate it by an angle of what? One hundred fifty degrees. So that's it. So it gives us. 1, 5, whatever that you have there, then the, the y value, remember, in rectangular form, it's going to be x plus or minus jy. So that's the idea there. So with this, now we can be able to add. Remember, addition is very easier to, 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 to deal with in a rectangular form because all you just need is to add the real part, uh, the imaginary part on its own. So just going to add the real part. Uh, together, so you're subtracting 1,900 minus this value. So this was going to give us uh, three, 351,154. Then 0 plus 900, that is J900. So you obtained ER in rectangular form. So that is our answer. But this is in rectangular form. Guys, we're going to convert. We talked about this. Conversion to polar form from rectangular form. So you are going to obtain 966.079, the angle there being uh, 68,686 degrees. So that is in polar form. So this is the E that we need on that formula there. We have this. That is the stages that you need. So having this, we can remember already we, we have got uh, the, the Z, the impedance. So it follows that. You, you must be careful now that um, division, I said division, it is best to have in polar form. So you are going to take your ER in polar form, 966,079 uh, at an angle of 68,686 degrees. Then divide to the Z which is the for bo combined both 
That is our Z, this one combined, which was 9,09. Uh, 009 at an angle of 87,455 degrees. Division is best in polar form. So this was going to give us the current. So what is the value of the current? So remember polar form, divide the numbers separately. This is going to give us 107,235. What about the angles in polar form? We subtract division subtract the angle so that will be 68.686 minus 87 uh, comma there so that was going to be negative 18 comma 769 degrees which is measured in amperes so this is your current you can write in a rectangular form that is uh, uh, that is what you it's uh, it's up to you so actually you can just write your current as 107,235 amps which is the, the synchronized, the circulating card, the one that is affecting our circuit. The current. They are going to ask you these typical questions. They are going to ask you these typical questions. You are supposed to be very, very careful. Then you are being asked, uh, so that was it, the five marks. Then the terminal voltage. It's so a three phase. You're dealing with a terminal voltage of a three phase. So like I said, for a three phase, in order for you to have the terminal voltage, we are talking about uh, EL at the first, which is square root of three times EP, where the EP is taken as from these formulas, whatever part that you're going to use. Okay. Let's say I want to use the second one, which is EP is equal to EA minus, it must be in a rectangular form because we are subtracting there. Division in polar form. Take note, division in polar form. So each and every part that you are given, you are supposed to be very, very careful. How are you given your information. So given uh, that uh, EP is equal to EA because uh, there we have uh, already calculated our EA and it's in rectangular form. So we can take advantage of uh, this formula. All right. So we just want to see what were we going to obtain here. All right. Let me just remove some of the other things, guys, because if I remain... With this, it is just going to affect everything. And sometimes we just have to start again. All right. So this is it. We have got our ER here. So like I said, we can have a continuation from the ER that we obtained in um, rectangular form. So what you're going to do is to first obtain uh, the EP, which is for the first. Then you calculate ER. Remember, this is a three-phase connection. So depending with what you are, how you want to, you're going to write as EP, you're going to write as VP, it's up to you as long, you know, P is for, for the first. So that is going to be EA minus half of ER. So that is EP is equal to EA. Remember EA is 110. And we even saw that here, the EA converted to the rectangular form is just going to remain as uh, 1,000. 910 plus J0, okay? Then we're going to have minus half of EA. EA already in um, rectangular form. This is the part of EA when you, uh, sorry for that, sorry for that ER. We need half of ER, not EA, but half of ER, this one. The ER is the one that we have here, the final answer here. This is our ER. And it's best that we make it in rectangular form. So this was 351, 351,154 plus J900. Okay, so that is going to give us our EPs. Just going to expand your brackets, collect uh, the terms together. So minus half of this, minus half of 900. So this will give us minus... Uh, 175,577 minus half times J900 
that is minus J450. So if they have got uh, minus J450. So considering the like terms, because you are in a rectangular form, you're going to combine the 1,910 minus the 175,55. That was going to be 1,734,423. Then 0 minus 450, that was minus J450 like this. So this is our EP in volts, and this is uh, in a rectangular form. Convert to polar form, guys. Uh, this one, I just hope all of us, we are now used to this. That was going to be 1791,849 at an angle of minus 14,545 like this. This is what you're going to actually have in uh, polar form. Uh, this is in rectangular form. So you've got uh, your EP. So meaning to say, writing in polar form we need the magnitude there because remember we need the terminal so from this uh, part we said the terminal voltage el is going to be square root of three ep because we are dealing with a star so we need the magnitude there of ep and this is the magnitude of the voltage so the terminal voltage EL, because it's a star connection, is going to be square root of 3 times EP, which is for the fares. Remember line. So that will be the square root of 3 times EP 1791.849 volts, taking the magnitude. This was going to be 3,103.574 volts. So that is your terminal voltage at the end. And the terminal voltage is the one that you also use whenever you are uh, to calculate the power. Maybe they can give you an additional question where you are now calculating the power from this. That can be an additional. Yeah, we're done. So the power you're going to use, the square root of three, the terminal voltage times the current, which is the synchronizing current times the cos of theta which is uh, taken at zero degrees in that case. So you have this. It's just a matter of substituting the values. So these are some of the additional questions that you can actually have or be given. So like I said, working with uh, the, the this part of uh, the parallel operation of alternators, you need different types of questions. This was a three-phase star connection. If it was a single phase, a single phase, the, 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 the VP that you obtain is the same. Like the, 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 the part that you we have, also this one, it's a, a three-phase. All right, no problem. Let's just consider this one again. They are saying here we are given, uh, so let me remove this one. I don't want to, to have a mistake just like uh, the other class that we ended up using the information that we are not supposed to have. So guys, you see, I was saying uh, before that the more information that we have on these boards tend to be so weird to work with these boards. But anyways, let's remove this one. Okay. So I was saying, there is a similar question uh, to what we're given there. They are saying two similar three phase against a star connected. It's a three phase and star connected. Okay. They are connected in a parallel. Each machine is a synchronous reactance. We are given the reactance this time. The reactance is just like the impedance. Remember, just like we are given resistance, but this time we are just considering as the reactance. So you can write X for, for reactance. You can just write Z. The way that you understand that's our, that's our reactance this time. We're given the reactance as uh, 9.5 ohms. 
So remember, it's for each, each. So for both, like I said, you multiply. So that will be two times 7,5 ohms. That is, you add the two. That is simply multiply by two, which will be 15 ohms. Perfez. And negligible resistance. So the resistance is negligible, meaning to say that reactance is your impedance. We're going to just take as it is. The machines are adjusted to be in exact phase opposition relative to each other, and the excitation of one alternator is adjusted to give an open circuit voltage of 3,800 per phase. An open circuit. So this year, we are to consider, is it the open circuit for both? Remember, these are two alternators. So we are going to consider A and B. So they're saying it's given an open circuit of 3,800. But we need to know, is it A or B? So they are saying the open circuit, you need to calculate the open circuit of the other machine, assuming it is less than that of the first machine. It is less than that of the first machine. So the first machine is the one that you are given, which is given excitation at an open circuit, which is our EA. So I mean to say this is our EA. Okay, the first one you're going to consider as your EA, 3,800. Then the second one, you consider it as E, B, which is, remember I say this, E, A, E, B, uh, our open circuit voltages. So these are the open, so the open circuit for the second one is your E, B. But we are given with the reference to a phasor diagram, with reference to a phasor diagram, and for a circulating current of 64 amps. For a circulating current, we are given the current this time of 64 amps. This time, the current you're given. Calculate the following, the open circuit voltage, like what we said for the second machine, which is EB, considering to say it's less than the first one. So that is our EB. Uh, we used the formulas that we considered um, about these two relationships. This, um, ER resultant being equal to EA minus EB if you're given the angles. They were not even given about the part of the angles that uh, a certain part is going to leg by a certain angle, this and that. No, we are not given that. We are not given that. Number one. Number two, these are not even in polar form. They're just direct. We are not we're just direct. So this is the best formula that you're going to consider. But on this formula, it relates the resultant to A and B. The resultant is equal to EA minus EB. But let's see. Are we having the resultant? No. We do not have the resultant. So in this case, okay, let us just formulate what we need because we need to calculate EB. Let us just make EB the subject. Take EB to the other side. That is uh, going to be a positive EB there is equal to EA minus ER. So this is the formula that you're going to use to find EB, but we do not have ER. So to calculate ER, remember, we, uh, we are given the total impedance for both and also the current, which is our circulating or synchronizing current, which you said is ER over Z. So from there, we can calculate ER. Because the current is given as ER over Z. So to calculate ER, we can just cross multiply over 1. That's 1 times ER. It follows that ER is equal to the product of these two. So that is ER is the product of the synchronizing current. And the impedance for both machines, for both. This is the resultant, remember. So it must take, be taken for both. The current given as 64. Then the impedance for both, since the resistance is negligible, we take that reactance as our impedance, which is 15, the total for both. So that is uh, going to give us uh, the resultant 
uh, for these two. All right. So ER is going to be 916 uh, volts. So we have this. We can calculate uh, EB, which is uh, the one that we need for the second one, according to the information that we're given, the open circuit voltage for the second one. So EA is the bigger value, which is the one in, uh, representing the first one, 3,800 minus ER, which is uh, from this calculation is going to be 960. So that's we're going to obtain EB. And that was going to be 2,840 volts. According to what we're given, according to the information that is taken from that second other part. That is what we have. It's just direct. You are given EA, you are given EB, you are not even given the angles. So it's a direct calculation when it is like that. Then the terminal voltage, since we are given also this, you can consider the terminal voltage. Uh, remember the three phase. So this is not going to change to calculate EL, which is the terminal voltage. But this time, we are not given those polar form consideration or, I mean, rectangular consideration. Just take your EA over, EA plus EB uh, over two. They just direct, we do not have an angle to be considered to be added or what. So that will be the best to use. So the terminal voltage, you first need to calculate uh, uh, the one for the, for the EP, which is, uh, okay, so that's 5.52. Let's just consider this. So EP, it's going to be best this time that we just use EA plus EB over 2. It's just direct. EA, remember, that is the first one that we, okay, well, remember, I raised this. So our EA was given as 3,800, the first one that you're given there. So that's 3,800 plus EB, the one that we just calculated now. So EB was 2,840. 2,840 divided by two. So this is going to give us uh, a direct answer for our phase, which is EP 3,320 volts. So the terminal voltage now, which is EL, because it's a star connection. Remember, the line voltage is square root of three times the phase. But uh, this you consider as EP, the way that you wrote there. So that is EL is going to be the square root of three times EP, which is 3,320. Uh, and that was going to give us 5,750,409 volts. That is our terminal voltage at the end. If it was a single phase, the EP that you calculate here is your terminal voltage. The EP that you obtain there as it is, that is your terminal voltage. So be careful what you're given. What are you working with? The three phase, the star connection. So remember in a star, line voltage is equal to square root of three times the phase. Okay, but in a single phase, your, your phase is your line voltage. There's no three phase, so you don't consider that. Read to understand the information, that is the question that you are given. Read to understand. So it's a part of your AC machines. From the part that we worked with of uh, the generated EMF. Now we've got this part of parallel. So you're going to work stage by stage. Then after that, we just combine uh, question papers like how do they ask as a complete question. But concerning... Uh, the issue of the parallel operation of, of alternators. Yeah, we'll revise with this part and more questions to come that we shall have. But for now, that's it, guys. Till we meet again.